The waters of the San Francisco Bay are predicted to rise in the coming decades, threatening homes, businesses, and industrial complexes along its shores. It's not a matter of if the water will rise, but rather by how much. One worst case scenario predicts that the bay could rise by 10 feet by the end of this century. Not only will that flood homes, but new research has focused on the industrial sites that will be affected, from wastewater treatment plants to landfills and refineries. Joining me now to talk about all this is KQED climate reporter Ezra David Romero, Ariane Harrison, founder and CEO of the Marie Harrison Community Foundation, and Richmond Vice Mayor Eduardo Martinez. Thank you all so much for being here. Ezra, I want to start with you. It starts with climate change. Tell us kind of the risks to low-lying cities in the Bay Area as a result of the sea level rise. Right, there's 8 million people that live around the Bay Area, and we have all this mileage of shoreline. So if there's 10 feet of sea level rise, there's billions of dollars in damage, people's lives, um, big tech companies, ports. It's like the whole Bay Area, Bay Area is sort of at risk. Vice Mayor Eduardo Martinez, from where you sit in Richmond, how are you seeing this issue of sea level rise? Well, uh, it's, uh, we have 39 miles of shoreline, so it affects us greatly. Um, we have a lot of data, and, and uh, we need to use this data not to despair, but to prepare. And there's a lot of preparation that needs to take place. And when we prepare, we need to make sure that we account for the lower income people, because uh, uh, they're the ones most adversely affected. Ariane Harrison, you're dealing with this issue across the Bay in San Francisco in the Bayview Hunters Point neighborhood. How do you see this issue of sea level rise if these projections take place? How does that affect members of your community? Well, I want to, to, to tell you that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Okay, uh, me being a Bayview Hunters Point for a very long time and being a, what you call a legacy child, five generations strong, we also know that, I need to, to let you guys know that in Bayview Hunters Point specifically, that we get, that we receive like 80% of uh, San Francisco sewage. And, be, and what's more prevalent is the storm water, about 100%. Um, it's going to affect, the flooding will affect, directly affect, affect children, seniors and people that already have presenting um, uh, health issues, okay? Uh, we have the highest rate of respiratory disease and cancer ac from across the nation, right there concentrated in Bayview Hunters Point. And if you wanna ask me why, I think that one of the, one of the factors that we have to say is that we have brownfield sites. Brownfield sites are industrial and abandoned uh, contaminated sites, sites that are filled with lead, silica, and all kind of different um, different chemicals that are known and prone to offer disease for people that worked in those, those places, so why would we not be adversely affected? I want to also say that we have a uh, state and a government uh, Superfund site there that is filled with contaminate, contaminated toxic chemical waste. waste. And I think it's for us as San Franciscans that we need to start addressing this issue, not yesterday, but right now, today, I don't want to have lead another legacy of toxic chemical waste. And with the urgency of sea level rise, do you know that those contaminants will be walking to the greater Bay Area? Right, well, Ezra, you've done reporting on some new research that has found that there could be hundreds of potentially toxic sites uh, that could be affected by sea level rise. Yeah, UC Berkeley and UCLA did this joint project called Toxic Tides, and they looked at federal data and found that more than a thousand toxic sites, across, hazardous sites across the state, everything from sewage treatment plants to like armory places to Superfund sites like the one in Bayview Hunters Point or old pharmaceutical sites like in Richmond and across the Bay Area there are hundreds and hundreds of these everywhere from San Francisco to Richmond to Marin City, San Jose, they are all over the place. So it's very prevalent and they're in almost every community here in the Bay. And Vice Mayor, uh, as, as you know, we see these projections talk about the end of the century. Now, you and your colleagues probably won't be in office at, at that point in time, but how are you approaching this in the current day, the kind of day-to-day -day land use decisions that you're making as a member of the City Council? Well, we're trying to change the way we look at it. We need to start planning for the future instead of planning for now or planning for the next 10 or 20 years. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is to make sure that development is in a smart place as opposed to a place that could be affected by sea level rise. We also need to make sure that toxic uh, 
uh, sites are cleaned up along the board, uh, along the shoreline because once the sea level rise comes in, those toxic, uh, the, the toxins in the soil are going to start moving uh, with with the with the sea level and 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 into the groundwater. So so even uh, houses that are not close to the shoreline will start being affected. And Ariane, you know, what is driving your urgency on this issue, your passion, your activism to deal with this right now? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Okay, I think that um, what happened for me is I participated in a biomonitoring uh, project. And a part of that, besides being a community activist, is by nature and by, um, by legacy, really, uh, is that, you know, getting my test, my, ur my urinalis tox screen test, it was kind of like mind blowing and it's like no wonder I have these uh, presenting health issues and problems that I do. No wonder the kids in the community are sick, sick and people are complaining but what we have this difference is we have the science going along with what people's cries, rallying cries have been for, a, for decades. So we're finding things like candominium, chromium, copper, rubidium, uh, uranium and lead at very high, high rates above reference rates for human bodies. So any place that you build something that's like the atomic bomb, bomb to think that there would not be some human carnage, carnage is ridiculous. Well, unpack that for us because we're talking about sea level rise in the future, but you're doing health analysis and gathering that information right now. What are you finding? Yeah. So finding that, finding that data, what I'm finding what's trending is that we have definitely, um, human beings that is, have, we have definitely been carrying on all the evidence that they need need to know that this is a serious problem problem as far as our health concerns we're finding that we have these we have these toxins and these materials in our body that are above reference range so saying that there's no wonder that we have the highest rate of cancer and the highest rate of respiratory disease these in you know across from across the nation people in foreign current countries know about baby hunter's point so i just want to uh to explore, explore the possibilities of how we can reserve life in a real way and show up for each other as San Franciscans. Um, I would also like to say that, uh, that this is the time. This is not the time to remain in the, in the benches, you know what I'm saying, get out of the benches and, and get, into, get into life and show up and be present. There are things that you can do. Do you can call your city representative you can call your go you can call your governor. This is something that's not just a Bayview Hunters Point issue. This is a San Francisco issue. We have to save the city. And you're talking about federal response. Ezra, the Navy says a lot of these contaminants, they're buried in the ground, they're capped. But what happens to those caps if we start to see sea level rise? Yeah, so scientists talk about, you know, it's not just water going over the banks and sea levels rising in that way. Many years before that happens, the water will push in underneath the ground and start pushing up, you know, like it's sort of like if you put sand in a box on one side and you start filling up with water, you don't see water in the sand immediately, but over time it all becomes wet. And what that does, it can eat away at those toxins, the toxins in the soil, and then spread into the community, spread into the bay. So that's why scientists are really worried as seas, let seas rise, that communities and people and animals can be harmed. And Vice Mayor, you are no stranger to debates over environmental cleanup uh, in Richmond. How do you kind of approach that from a city council perspective in a city that might not have the resources of a place like San Francisco to always take on that kind of cleanup? It's something that has to happen. Uh, and, and legislation is, is the way to go. It, legislation is, is where we find the money and where we force uh, uh, the, the people who left the toxins there uh, become responsible and do the cleanup. Um, it's, 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 it's a major, major issue. Um, uh, this is a land of earthquakes. We're going to have earthquakes. And when they happen, the caps are going to crack. And the question is, how do we deal with the cracks if we build communities on top of the, uh, on, uh, on top of the caps? A lot of these questions, Ezra, come back to land use. They come back to development. And you've been reporting on how this sea level rise issue intersects with housing. How are those issues colliding in a place like Newark? In Newark, it's a very interesting issue. It's, it's more of a conservative place. It's where they have, they have us. A city council that has made decisions to build homes and on a wetland there and the whole idea is they want to build homes but they're not exactly thinking about the long-term 
what's going to happen with 10 feet of sea level rise. A lot of these cities around the bay, counties, are looking at lower levels of sea level rise. But scientists that I've talked to are saying we need to look at like the higher rates because they, have not, they don't have faith that global greenhouse gas emissions around the globe are going to decrease. Vice Mayor, I guess simply, should there be development on places we know will be flooding in the decades to come, or is it build now and mitigate now and keep mitigating later? Uh, I, th I think the answer is obvious. We shouldn't be building where there's going to be sea level rise. Um, uh, there's, th we need to start building smart instead of uh, building for profit. And, uh, and we also need to start coming up with a green uh, solution. And one of the green solutions would be to uh, train Richmond residents to do the cleanup that needs to happen because if we don't clean up the toxins uh, along the shoreline, it's not only going to pollute the land further away from them, but it's also going to pollute the bay and the bay will become un uh, unsafe for, for, for humans, for fish, you know, and so it, it needs to be clean. Ariane, I'm curious, in your activism in San Francisco, mm -hmm. what's the response you've gotten from the mayor, the Board of Supervisors, even federal officials, do you feel like you're being heard? Well, I, I want to wanna say that our District 10 Supervisor has been present, present and he has been at the table talking and meeting and engaging the community and the EJ groups groups in, um, in Bayview Hunters Point. However, it, however, we haven't heard anything from the mayor. We love our mayor, but we want her to love us back. And I think that this is worthy of a response. Ezra, if you'd allow me to maybe inject a little bit of good news uh, into this conversation. You've done a lot of reporting in San Mateo County, the county most at risk in the Bay Area of sea level rise, but it sounds like there's already a lot of efforts underway there. Yeah, there's a project called One Shoreline where they want to prepare the entire shoreline of San Mateo County um, for ten, from 10 feet of sea level rise, and that's like the higher limit. And they believe it's going to happen. This is a low-lying area, the most at-risk place in all of California. And so why not prepare it? And so some good news, it's in the works, but once again, sea level rise plans are very local. They happen at the county city level. So it's very dependent on each place and who you vote for and what your local politicians, the decisions they're making. Vice Mayor, I can't help but think though, this seems like an issue ripe for regional collaboration. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, we have formed a uh, organization called uh, Climate uh, Emergency Mobilization Task Force, which is trying to get all of the uh, uh, jurisdictions who are responsible for, 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 for the health of the Bay together so that we can come up with a regional solution. Uh, because whatever they do in San Mateo is going to affect all the other cities uh, uh, who share the shoreline. So this, this is definitely a regional uh, issue that needs a regional solution. It's clearly an issue of environmental justice. I'm curious, Ariane, how do you see justice in this I issue? I mean, I've even heard you talk about this through the lens of reparations. Yes, I've talked about it through the lens of reparations. And unfortunately, when you bring it up, certain, certain segments of our, of our, of our, our folks, they kind of cringe because they think that you're gonna go in their bank and take it and rip their checks away. That's not the case. When I'm talking about this, but this specific portion of repar reparations, how that would look, Look, I think that everybody can generally relate to this, is that it, the people, the residents of Bayview 100 Point, Point are gonna need um, specific kind of, kind of medical care, care and attention, okay? And our normal current systems of care do not provide those services. Services, um, what, I, what, what, I'm, what I'm asking for in a form of reparations as far as environmental justice is that we know that the number one killer of finances is medical when you get a certain age, especially if you have all the mitigating factors that we, that we have going on amongst our residents in Bayview Hunters Point. So when I am hollering reparations, even though I believe in all the other forms, that is specifically what I'm advocating for. Also, you know, I would love to have the opportunity to meet with our, with our uh, interim uh, district attorney to also, to also state, state and ask her. The, 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 the important question is, is that we have industrial polluters in our community like nobody's business that are operating without punity. So who, who is addressing environmental law? 
Who's enforcing the law? Can somebody up on high station hire somebody that's versed in environmental law and create a team around them so we can start get addressing some of these prevalent issues that are in these low income communities of color across the nation, you know, and especially here in San Francisco. And I'm gonna also say this, this is very important. This is San Francisco. We are the do it first city. Okay, we raise our hands up high and we praise that we are the climate justice, climate, climate uh, justice leaders in the nation. But until you address that, it's nothing but fluff. You know what I'm saying? Don't, it sounds good on its hindsight to say, hey, we are climate justice, justice city. But for this to go on for decades, we have to say it, but we kind of put the work in behind it to mean it. We could do it. We're San Franciscans. It takes all of us. This is a San Francisco issue. I'm here for it. I want it to end on my watch. You know, I don't want to leave another legacy of toxic and chemical waste. I don't think the clean air, water, and land is too much to ask for. So Ezra, let's leave it here. What is the cost of inaction on this issue for our region? I'd say billions of dollars, people's lives, infrastructure as we know it, the bridges, the homes, cities all around the Bay Area are all at risk of being inundated with feet and feet of water. Well, we will leave it there. Ezra David Romero, Ariane Harrison, and Vice Mayor Eduardo Martinez, thank you all so much for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you can find more of Ezra's reporting on our website at kqed.org climate.